Hello and welcome to HITC Sport. Alright, let's take a look at the players of every age from 18 to 40 who are still playing who were way overhyped from a young age. Oh, and by the way, before we start the video, Instagram is there, Twitter is there if you want to go and follow that. Uh, yeah, let's crack on. 18, Angel Gomez. Okay, lads, no matter who I say for this age, I'm going to be wrong. How does anyone possibly have enough time to prove that they're overhyped at the age of 18 years old? For Christ's sake, most 18-year-olds are out drinking cans in the ditch and trying to sex the hole in the couch. Maybe that was just me. But the only sliver of reason that I'm gonna go for Gomez, the man to whom the 90s is a foreign concept, and who has probably never heard of Saved by the Bell, and who became the youngest ever recipient of the Jimmy Murphy Player of the Year Award in 2017, and made his first team debut debut in the same month at the age of 16. I mean, he's made just one league appearance since then. One appearance! I mean, for Christ's sake, Gomez, your career is falling away before your eyes. Soon you'll be sitting in the gutter, feasting on a diet of rat tails before seeking out a move to Chesterfield FC. Yeah, I'm being too hard on him, aren't I? I'm, I'm putting more pressure on him than Michael Jackson's dad. Please don't turn out to be a nonce. 19, Ben Woodburn. I know he scored last week against Trinidad Tobago, but lads, my postman could score against Trinidad Tobago and he has type 2 diabetes. This fella smacked home a 25 yard winner for Wales against Austria in September 2017, becoming the second ever youngest Wales goal scorer. I mean, the only other lad just happened to want to win four Champions Leagues. Some Liverpool fans were already tossing themselves off under a desk, begging Jurgen Klopp to stick this young fella in the team. Well, it's, it's two years later and he's just spent the season on loan at Sheffield United, playing eight times and scoring zero goals. Just saying, but um, when Bale was 19, well, actually, no, he was... He was sitting on the Spurs bench being branded a curse. 20, Martin Odegaard. Remember Martin Odegaard? How quickly did that fella's career get swept under the goddamn carpet? That kid was a Norwegian starlet, breaking into the Stromscots at first team at the age of 15. Too young for the Champions League, too old for the Netherland ranch. Instead, he was chopped head first into the Norway first team. Again, at 15 years of age, lights. He was 15. This kid should have been playing FIFA for nine hours a day, bursting with hormones, whacking himself off to everything from late night TV to the fuck family cat. Or maybe that's just Shane Dawson. Imagine signing for Real Madrid for 80 grand a week, barely a month after your 17th birthday. No wonder his career has gone down the drain. He essentially set himself up for life before he even finished puberty. He's played one game for the first team and is currently out on loan at Vitesse Arnhem. You know that one, the uh, footballing dungeon where promising careers go to die. Martin Odegaard, the next Ballon d'Or winner? Uh, lads, the only way he's ever getting sands on that trophy is if he breaks into someone's house and fucking steals it. 21, Renato Sanchez. Okay, now we're getting a bit older, so I can stop bullying kids and writing their careers off before they're even legally allowed to drink in the US. Ronaldo Sanchez won the 2016 Golden Boy Award after helping Portugal win Euro 2016 and earning a 40 million move to Bayern Munich. Since then, his career has fallen off a cliff. Swansea signing him on loan looked bizarre. It looked even more bizarre when he was getting outshunned by Sam and Klukas. 12 appearances, he got relegated, and now he's back at Bayern where he's Still struggling. 22, Kalichi Iheanacho. Kalichi Iheanacho was the original Gabriel Jesus. He didn't get many minutes on the park for Man City, but when he did, he usually scored. So when he signed for Leicester for 21 million in 2017, everyone thought he'd you know, start banging in hat-tricks now and just be unleashed. And now he's uh, he's been a damn squib. 40 goals in 44 games is a pathetic return for a centre forward. Lad, Harry Maguire has a better goal return than you. 23, Jordan Ibe. Jordan Ibe's goal today? Who needs Raheem Sterling? Jordan Ibe will become a better player than Raheem Sterling, that's a fact. Jordan Ibe is the future, Sterling who? It's so going to be funny when we get 50 million pounds for Sterling, when Jordan Ibe finally shows he's the better player, he'd be worth a good 70 million. Jordan Ibe will be better than Sterling, can do everything Sterling can do and more. If Sterling wants to go, hold him to ransom over the fee. He has one good game in five, Jordan Ibe, far better prospect in my opinion. Before Adnan Yanezai. Manchester United turned down PSG bid for Adnan Yanezai. Oh, let's make it stop. Seriously, remember there was once a moment in time when this lad had about five countries fighting over his passport, with England legitimately wanting to sign him up. Things were so bad under David Moyes at Manchester United that some kid who just happened to score a couple against Sunderland and didn't look like a big bag of steaming wet piss was hailed as the second coming of Leo Messi. No. no. No lads. His career trajectory very much followed that of Moyes, failing at both Sunderland and Real Sociedad. Lads, David Moyes sacked off Wilfred Zaha for this kid. Not only is that a sackable offence, that shit is worthy of fucking jail time. I don't care what the rumours were, he could have had triplets with your fucking daughter. Do not throw Zaha in the bin for Adnan Yanisai. Ridiculous. 25, Saido Barahino. I considered Ross Barkley, considering you know half the nation was 
Comparing him to Wayne Rooney back in 2012, but Said Obarahino is the obvious choice. It was only a few years ago this man was sitting on the England bench, scoring 20 goals a season and then getting linked with moves to Tottenham. Even before that, he was getting picked ahead of Harry Kane for the England under 21s. The man was a hungry young striker destined for big things. Now he's uh, scored three goals in as many years, has been forced to swap England for Burundi, although unlike Declan Rice, nobody gives a flying fuck, has been in battles with the law and the only hunger he's got is for the three boxes of haagen crammed into his fridge. 26, Ravel Morrison. Speaking of troublemakers, oh good lord. Sir Alex Ferguson once said this kid was the best youngster he had ever seen. But Morrison was a talent in the same youth team as Pogba, Lingard and Sean McGinty. The only problem was he was a bit of a... He was a bit, you know, he was a bit of one of those. You just know Morrison was the type of kid in school who'd spend his free period smoking in the toilets and smashing up windows in the car park. Wait, what am I talking about? He clearly didn't go to school. He had a rap sheet down to his goddamn ankles. So he failed at Man United, West Ham, Birmingham, QPR, Cardiff, Lazio, QPR again, Atlas, and now Ostersund out the back arse of Sweden. Without a single cap to his name. No one listened to a word I said. The irony. 27, John Bostock. John Bostock was playing championship football at 15 years of age. I'm sorry, but if anybody is doing that, they are going to get hyped up, no matter who they are. Bostock will be remembered as the kid who signed for Spurs the next year, causing Crystal Palace chairman Simon Jordan to have a bit of a meltdown. Long story short, uh, Bostock's career never took off. He turned into a bit of a tourist, though. Toronto, Antwerp, Leuven, Lens, Bursa Sport, and now Toulouse. Although, let's be honest, never mind his career. The man is lucky he's still alive, considering he was involved in this. 28, Bojan. Bojan was supposed to be the next Lionel Messi. That's what are the odds we're gonna get another Messi in our lifetime, let alone born three years apart. But Boyan had over 160 Barcelona games to his name by the age of 21, so maybe the hype was justified. By the age of 28, he's been farmed out on loan to Alav, having been deemed surplus to requirements at Stoke f***ing City. Stoke f***ing City, who still play side of Berahino. 29, Freddie Adu. Freddie Adu was once hailed as an ex-Pele. He's currently 29 playing for something called Las Vegas Lights FC and is forced to endorse vacuum cleaners on Twitter. For Christ's sake, the longer this man's career croaks on, the worse and more laughable that prediction looks. His career is essentially like that dog who used to be full of life and hope back in 2004. The next lassie, but who now limps around the house, is half blind in one eye and sleeps in its own shit. You're thinking maybe it's time to put the poor thing out of its goddamn misery. 30 Michael Richards. I'm tempted to include Anthony Stokes, I really am. I still remember my country hailing him as the prodigal son after he scored 14 goals in 16 games for Falkirk. Now he's 30 and playing up front for Tractor Sazi out the west coast of goddamn Moran. But no, Michael Richards for sure. I mean, he was in the England team at 18. Tip for greatness at Man City. I mean, yeah, he did win the league. But what has he done since 2012? What has he done since the age of 23? And nothing. I mean, he's now in Villa. He hasn't played a game since 2016. What does he get out of it? And he's on the verge of retirement. I mean, oh, just 31 Royston Drenth. I mean, I've got to include a player from the Holland under 21 side that romped to victory at the 2007 European Championships. I mean, which should be a warning to anyone banking on England winning World Cup anytime soon because of the underage teams. Drenth was another, a voted player of the tournament, signed for Real Madrid and then nothing. Well, apart from playing for a bunch of bang average clubs, releasing hideously terrible rap songs, playing once for the national team and telling David Moyes to f*** off. He's currently a spider Rotterdam, probably with a bunch of regrets. 32, Gabriel Agbon Lahore. Gabriel Agbon Lahore is currently unemployed, with nobody worth their salt going to give this man a ring, for fear that he'd probably eat the f***ing contract. But let's just read out a few headlines about this man from it joining his career. Gabriel Agbon Lahore rules out Arsenal move. Gabriel Agbon Lahore keen to make World Cup case to Fabio Capello. Fabian Delph, Gabriel Agbon Lahore scares any defender in the world. Aston Villa's Gabriel Agbon Lahore is the new Michael Owen. To the younger viewers who've only ever known this fella as that fat Aston Villa striker who just spent their relegation with his face buried six feet deep in his fucking fridge. These headlines must just come as a slap to the face. 33, Valery Bayanov. I remember Valery Bayanov from the early 2000s. In Serie A, smashing them in for Lecca, Fiorentina and Juventus. He also had a potential rating of about 91 or something mental on FIFA 07. And then he wound up at Man City, got his knee smashed in. By the time he recovered, I mean, the club were no longer shopping in the bragging basement aisle, and he was no longer needed. Since then his CV just kind of reads like a who's who of footballing nobodies. With a few exceptions, but, but seriously. Mizu Haka, Lausanne, Botev, Rasa. I'm sorry, who? He currently plays for Levski Sofia. 34, Neymar. Neymar was the next Neymar before Neymar was known. Getting that European move to Lyon in 2004, he didn't really do much. Returned to Brazil where he scored a few, uh, went back to Europe with Villarreal. He scored 22 in his first two seasons, but he, he 
kind of dried up and then he found himself stuck out in Qatar at the age of 28. Saudi Arabia was next and then he just drifted into obscurity. 35, Robinho. If Robinho ever bothered to look up HITC sport, maybe he'd dispute this. Then again, he's probably more interested in bathing in money, drinking sangria and dodging the law. He's a man who really played over 130 times for Real Madrid and over 140 for AC Milan, really overhyped. Then again, holding up his time at AC Milan is a bit of a falsehood, considering the club were on their way down. It's a bit like bragging about going out with Lindsay Lohan when she's addicted to smack and Looks like she's been hit by a bus. But still, here are the facts. Rabinho was another lad labelled the next Pele. He never hit more than 14 league goals in a season. Only four of his last 11 seasons of his career have been spent in the Champions League. Two of them were spent with Tal Ben Haim. I mean, come on! Next Pele, me arse. 36, Jermaine Pennant. Jermaine Pennant was once the most expensive British teenager in British football. How embarrassing. Scoring a hat-trick in his Premier League debut did little to stem the, uh the hype train. I mean, he'd end up playing in a Champions League final. He'd also end up at Villarreal Town, in the same team as your man who's made a living out of f***ing keepy uppies and dribbling past Stephen f***ing tries. Oh, and he also dragged his missus onto Jeremy Kyle recently as a cheap night out. Kinda just sums up where his career is right now. 37, Sean Wright Phillips. I've gotta say, when Chelsea spent 21 million on a 23-year-old Sean Wright Phillips, leaving his younger brother Bradley to rot in the city reserves, I did not expect to see his career turn out somehow worse than his sibling. It seems like Chelsea broke that man's soul. Poor on his return to City, dreadful at QPR. An anonymous out in America with New York Red Bulls and then Phoenix Rising. I'm He's currently unemployed. 38, Alan Smith. Yeah, he's a free agent, but he hasn't officially retired, so Alan Smith does, he just about counts. Before his injury, this man was tipped for great things. He was playing up front for Leeds United in the goddamn Champions League, then he went to Man United, busted his leg, moved to Newcastle, where he spent the majority of the last decade of his career in the lower leagues. Was he overhyped, lads, or was this all the fault of John Arisa? You decide. 39, Rob Green. I bet if you told Rob Green that he'd be at Chelsea at 39 years old, he'd have assumed that he'd have gone on to become one of the best goalies on the face of the earth. I mean, not quite. I mean, he was tipped to become one after breaking through in Norwich City. But now all we're going to remember about this man is the fact that he couldn't hold on to Clint Dempsey's shot at the World Cup. Oh, he also managed to lose his place to QPR roughly 10 minutes after signing for the club. 40, Paddy Kenny. Okay, this one was impossible. I'll admit, I, I can't find an overhyped 40 year old, alright? Because most of the ones that were have pretty much given up and already chucked it in by now. But I I guess I'm gonna go for Paddy Kenny, alright? I mean, it doesn't apply because everyone knew he was shit to begin with. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it doesn't really count. Not one person on the face of the earth overhyped him, not even his f***ing mother. So it did, I don't know. You find me a 40 year old and you let me know in the comment section below because I can't find one. But yeah, he's still going for a Maltby main FC in the Northern Counties East League. Good lad, you finally found your f***ing level. Anyway, that was the video lads. Let me know, have I been too harsh? Probably. Let me know what you think. Again, Twitter and Instagram is there. And uh, yeah, if you like the video, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, Talks in a while.